What's going on? Jeff Koga here, and it's about 11 p.m. or so, and uh, I'm sitting here at the new uh, home office, I guess, as we're remodeling the home office here. Got my books in the back. Uh, should be filled up by the end of uh, uh, this week, and then we also got um, over there. We're going to get some more books over there, um, but here, I want to talk about something, okay, real quick. I'm doing two things right now. One, late at night, I tend to try to study much as I can, as well as early morning, right, especially since I've been taking almost about uh, since... October or so, end of October before Halloween. I haven't stepped into the office other than to go pick up mail from the office. That's it. Other than that, I've been kind of remodeling the house and a lot has to do with, I don't know if you see that right there. I have a daughter on the way, so that's one of the reasons why, but I want to talk about a concept, especially right right here. As you can see, I need a haircut. But the idea of why you should never ask uh, a barber if you need a haircut or not. All right, and this concept, it's really important if you understand this, it's gonna apply in every part of your life. And before I kind of explain this concept, right, uh, I'm gonna tell you kind of two different stories and uh, I'm kind of jumping around, but I think it's really important. I just wanna get it on record uh, for a particular reason, right? So one is this, is that I'm working on a particular deal, right, with, uh, and this deal closed, I wanna say about three weeks ago, I wanna say, right, it closed and I was supposed to get uh, paid on it, but you know, the funds never came, right? Now, the issue is one, obviously, if you close on a deal and the funds doesn't come, that's one thing, but it's not a surprise, but what I wish I can get better at is to be able to articulate as this particular person is going through some things personally, right? A lot of uh, a lot of things mentally, and I've, I've been there, right? When it comes to like financial stress, right? It's a, one of the most difficult stuff you can go through if, you, if you've ever been through financial stress, and I know he's going through some challenges, right? So especially if you're in the business of real estate or any other business like sales where you get a bunch of income and then suddenly the well dries up right so it's a consistent yo-yo of income going up and down up and down right and I was wondering what the heck happened because the person went MIA on me right like literally like hey I'm waiting for like a check and I'm just like and I forgot about it right and I'm just like ah oh, okay and I totally forgot about that particular check and then I'm just like dude it's been like a week two weeks and I was just like wasn't I supposed to get get money from this so I hit him up he kind of disappeared and I was just like dude man where's you been and then he hits me back up and says yeah man and he gives me kind of the story of what happened which is at the end of the day basically he's not able to pay me right so I said hey man he told me kind of his story you know and I understood because I've been in financial you know challenges and it's not like hey you know I, I need to live off that money, right? But also at the same time, right? It, it's as a businessman, hey, I want to get paid for the stuff that I do, right? So I said, hey, dude, take care of what you need to take care of, and I'll give you a call this week. And so I talked to him today, early this morning when I was making my round of calls, and we got into a conversation, right? And what I tell individuals is, is this, is that I'm trying not to be that barber, right? Like I just said earlier when I started off this, right? Is that you never go to a barber and say, hey, dude, do I need a haircut, right? Because the Barber's always gonna tell you, hey man, you need a haircut, right? Like especially like me, I need a haircut right now, right? So I'm trying to become a better leader as an entrepreneur because I think because I think leadership is I think ties into everything, right? As I am going to become a father, the more and more I think about not only legacy, but I also start thinking about like uh, the leadership that I need to bring, uh, not just in the you know enterprises or businesses that I'm part of, also at the same time, how what kind of leader am I going to be for my daughter, right? What kind of leader am I going to be for uh, the Koga clan, I guess, if you want to call it that, right? So a lot of things have been shifting, and I've been thinking a lot about that stuff. And, uh, you know, as I was talking to this particular guy, he started talking to me. The first thing was basically he started telling me what and why uh, he wasn't able to pay, right? And what was really interesting is because he was just like, yeah, you know, I'm in this kind of funk and I'm in this trouble, but also at the same time, I, I know what I need to do, but I'm not doing it, right? And then so I said, hey, dude, you know, there's something there subconsciously in your mind that's holding you back. That's what I said, right? Because because if you consciously, you can articulate the problem, right? Now, there's obviously there's people that don't even know that they got a problem, right? Now, if they don't ha know that they got a problem, then okay, that's one thing, right? Like you're oblivious to it, right? So again, a cognitive bias and stuff like that, right? Something called the Duns and Cougar effect, right? A lot of us um, in the entrepreneur world or the Western uh, educated
location. They have that. The Dungeon Crew, look it up. Uh, they, um, two gentlemen uh, won a Nobel Peace Prize on this. It's ba basically called the superiority complex where we believe that we're always right, right? So when we listen to things or when we're learning about things, the only reason why we're learning about things or listening to is to justify or validate our own opinions, right? So as I'm talking to him, right, and he's telling me about the things he needs to do to get out of the funk, yet he's not doing it, right? You know, he said, hey, dude, I'm going to get you your money. Don't worry about it. But I said, hey, look, man, there's something bigger than this that you need to figure out. That's what I said. And I know his personality to a sense or more of his cognitive uh, side because I had him take something called a Kobe test many years ago. Right. Um, and this Colby test is not an IQ test, but it's more of a conation, right? Which is what, you, what is your natural instincts when you're under stress or when you feel like you're in the zone? Okay. And it's by a, a lady named by Kathy Colby, K O L B E. And I would have all of my, you know, students and people I work with ever to always take that. So that way I know how to communicate with them in the language pattern that they're used to, as well as to be able to get through so I can become obviously a better leader, right? So, so I knew that. Because because he had a strong fact finding, okay? A strong fact finding leg, all right? So when people have strong fact finding, this Kobe is broken down into like fact finding score, uh, something called a follow through score, something called a quick start. Um, a score and something called a uh, tangible score right now I'm not gonna explain what all this score means but the one that he was very high on was he was high on fact meaning that he likes to consume a lot of information before he makes a decision all right so there's nothing good or bad about that right it's just it's just a way of just understanding who you are and then from there when you understand who you are then at least you can figure out how not to yourself pretty much right sorry for my language here but so as I'm listening to this right he's giving me a lot of the facts right and I said look man if you're a fact finder I know this you're a fact finder I said probably the challenges and issues that you're gonna have is that you're reflecting back in the past I said why don't you do something different that's what I told him I said look man because I said if you're hiding from me uh, and don't want to have a conversation about money and grand scheme of things it's not a whole like a lot of money right it's only a couple thousand dollars right but also at the same time I said look man if you're having issues to communicate with me about money, I said, what type of conversation are you having with your wife and your kids and the people, immediate people, very, very close to you, right? Um, so, so I said, do this exercise. I said, go out, you know, take a day, take a two days, three days, however long you need to take, and then reflect, but not reflect back, right? But forward pace, right? Imagine what type of person you are five years, 10 years, right? Where do you live? You know, what are you driving, right? Like I said, do all of this exercise to reflect forward and to see where you, is this where you want to be, right? Because I was just like, dude, you need to get out of this funk, right? And so he said, okay, I'm going to do it. So hopefully he goes out and does this exercise and then maybe that will motivate him or do something to be able to get that, right? Because again, at the end of the day, right? Like we, if we know that we need to make a change, but we don't do it, then it really boils down to what is the big reason why you don't do it, right? And, and that why really it boils down to two things. Tony Robbins says, I think is very best is that people only make changes for two reasons, either with motivation or desperation and typically for sustained change you need both of those right so you get in that funk and I even went into to a position where I said hey dude do you actually like this that's what I said going through the shit of like you know income going up and down maybe subconsciously you actually like it that's what I said right because you know because in my mind I'm thinking about like hey, okay you're talking to people or you're talking to the wife you're talking to the friends you're talking to the immediate circle around them and you're having this conversation and maybe they suddenly you know hey a friend or someone is actually saying hey you doing this thing or whatever it is and he's getting attention from it and subconsciously maybe that's why they like it I don't know but you know so as I'm doing this I'm training myself to be a leader without trying to be judgmental right because because I've been in that position where where financially you know your income go, goes yo-yo up and down and it, it, it's tough you know now when I went through it I wasn't a father right and it kind of ties into a deal I was looking at um, it was a triplex in USC right so it was a triplex originally one of my guys brought it to me one of the rock star right as a matter of fact he told me today that um, he's making the most money he has ever made right and uh, while as he's taking the most days off 
and as well as he's went on more vacation, right? Which is freaking awesome, right? Let's think about that, right? So I think his number, I don't like to throw his stuff out there. We say he's going to end up maybe around like 350 or something like that, right? Um, hopefully, maybe he'll end up more or something like that, give or take, right? Um, but that's pretty damn good, you know? That's pretty damn good, you know? So, and then he went on more vacations, right? So, which is super cool. So, it's kind of like, you know, two sides, right? Now, where was I going with this, okay? Is that as uh, going back to the, the original gentleman, right? That, that he was going through some challenges, right? Like, I went through some financial stress but it was really like it was just myself and I had to worry about kind of the staff and people on payroll and things like that right I didn't have like you know hey like I said like my daughter's pictures right there and the tummy right there that's coming right so as I'm thinking about this right as I'm as I was looking at this triplex in USC that had good cash flow you know maybe maybe you can cash flow you know pick up like in the low couple five hundred thousands or something maybe afterwards worth a couple you know uh, you know it adds up like two hundred thousand equity or something you know cash flow maybe two grand three grand a month right so I was thinking about buying I really was right but then I was like dude do I really want to put my soldiers at work and then and then get into work you know like because because I'm out here in a uh, deep inland empire right versus like me when I was like living near more studio city and things like that valley village area right so then near USC it would have been a lot easier to manage and stuff like that and I was like dude I don't really want to do that as well as you know I like if I'm gonna get a cash on cash you know let's just say return of 15% a year or something like that right I started running my numbers I'm just like dude like I can just wait for the equities market to correct and I can make that up like psh, instantly, right? I can make that up instantly when the market corrects. So as I ran my numbers, I was just like, yeah, man, I, I probably don't want, maybe, maybe it's not the best move. Right, so I told my guy. I said, "Hey, dude, um, it's good, good for somebody else, but probably not for me at this moment. You know, like if it was maybe, you know, hey, six years ago, seven years ago, I would have bought this on, a, you know, like." Psh, I would have been like, forget it, you know? Now, there was rent control and things like that, which I don't want to deal with because I've owned properties that had rent control and it was a pain in the butt, right? So... So as I was going through this, you know, he's going he's gonna to make some good money off this particular deal um, as well. And uh, I'm reflecting a lot of things, right, in the last, especially the last 45 days, because literally I have not went into the office, okay? And I've been just reflecting, reflecting, thinking back, right? And a lot of it is boiling down to, again, is, is uh, and hopefully you understand about this, is it's about leadership, I think, you know? I think everything and stops with leadership. And uh, um, the constant question I'm asking is, what kind of father will I be? What kind of person do I want to be seen as? And what kind of role model will I be? And it's it's a really interesting question, you know. It's just like, you know, many of my friends who are parents, a lot of my a lot of my friends, you know, that have, uh, you know, kids and stuff like that, they would tell me, right? Like when you have kids, hey, it's gonna change your life like this. And uh, and I would be like, yeah, I know, I know, but it's like it's really different when you're going through the process. Now now my daughters do it April, right? So I don't, you know, it hasn't changed yet. But again, as I'm sitting here, you know, it has shifted. It has shifted dramatically. A lot, a lot of things have shifted. And some of the stuff that I wanted in my 20s has absolutely been thrown out, right? You know, I had this vision and idea of being able to, like, run a multi-million dollar company and stuff like that, right? And, and for the folks who have been following me for a long time know about this. Um, and then that kind of shifted into more of a lifestyle design of a business I currently have and being more towards the operator investor side. Um, and... Uh, um, you know, it, it's been amazing, you know, especially the last two years, you know, um, I got married last year and it's been pretty damn amazing. And um, my wife has helped me out tremendously in the business that we're in. And, you know, my recommendation, wherever you're at, if you're watching this and you've gotten this far, I've been ranting about something that was just on my mind because I haven't been, you know, streaming, talking to you all for a while now. And if you've gotten any value, here's what here's what I what I recommend, right, is take some time off, you know, really to just reflect back. You know, for some of you guys and gals that are very busy, right, it's going to be very hard, right? But try to find that time to do that. Now, I've always done this, you know, even when the times were, you know, beginning of this year, right? Uh, for the folks, you guys know I was doing like 14, 16, 17 hour days, right? Now, last year I did take uh, from November to December off as well. So this year I was debating should I or should I not? But I ended up saying, hey, you know what, let me take uh november december off again so as i'm sitting here you know at 11 21 as i've been ranting about 20 minutes or so um is to reflect back try to pick up a book or two 
right? That's, I, I can't stress this enough, you know, is to educate yourself. And not only that, but do not get tied into the marketing dogma of uh, uh, personal development, right? Because currently right now, there are so-called new age gurus and stuff like that, that are preach and teach and say things about uh, certain ways that you have to operate under. And I recommend individuals to learn from old money masters, learn from people that have been in the trenches and uh, understand that, hey, you know, there are other people that you can learn from outside of some of the people that are just simply running Facebook ads or people that are screaming and shouting on social media and um, some of the people I would recommend Jack Cantwell Peter Drucker right well just some of them right and you can see some of the books that I have based on those guys and and it, it's one of the best things right one of the best ones so far that came out is that one right there Ray Dalio principle if you haven't gotten that book get that book it's damn good and if there's some old books right that you need to get go back and read read again okay go through it uh, currently right now um, two things that I literally I've been spent the last two hours doing is um, reading rereading this book again it's called contrarian investings from uh, uh, investing uh, for the 90s okay so I'm, the reason is because someone was explaining how uh, one of my mentors was explaining how uh, we might be entering into kind of like the 90s right like a literally a flat market um, in the equities market so I'm rereading this book about uh, about strategies that worked well back then right and then also another one um, I'm going through again is um, this is an old classic I read this when it first came out right um, if you haven't get it right uh, money uh, master the game right this is kind of the thicker version of unshakable right I have unshakable right there uh, as well right and you can get this and the only part that I'm going through is from page 400 or so um, where they talk about the story of the the money managers like Ray Dalio Carl Icahn and things like that right and uh, trying to understand the psychology of uh, why they did the things that they did um, and why there are where they're at right and so that's my recommendation right because again it's it boils down to if you want to learn something right you want to get to a level I'll use an example of uh, example of when I was playing basketball right is that if you want to become one of the best players right is that do you really want to play pickup ball with your brother your uh, cousin uh, your neighbor or whatever, right? And you're playing pickup ball or sports or whatever, right? Um, at that level, you're not going to get that better, right? Versus, you know, going to a Kobe Bryant or something like that and trying to play with them. Yeah, if you play with him, he'd probably kick your ass and you're never going to be maybe be able to score a bucket or two. But you're probably going to learn sooner or later, um, you know, if you just pr even practice with them when you actually play with the other people, you're just going to kick their butt, right? So I remember this, you know, when I was a freshman, when I was playing uh, basketball and stuff like that, right? Um, going into my freshman year, I would practice with the varsity basketball team, right? And at that time, the speed was much faster, right? And so I was just like huffing and puffing. I thought I was in shape and I was just like, dude, I'm out of shape, right? And, um, and then I played both in varsity, JV, and even in the freshman tournaments during the summertime and it was just like a walk in the park during my freshman year uh, playing in those tournaments right especially when I was practicing with the varsity and then I go to a, uh, just like the freshman JV you know basketball uh, basketball tournaments right I think there was one in like Walnut High School where I think I averaged like over 30 points or something like that in, in that particular tournament um, and that was all I had to do was because I was practicing with the varsity team right so the point of me telling you all this is that way you can get stuff is only way is you got to educate yourself, ladies and gentlemen. Way too many people have too many opinions of stuff where you don't have the right to have an opinion. Right? Like, and I'm not trying to say this from like an ivory tower. It's more of a place of trying to be open-minded much as possible, right? And uh, being more conscious of... Uh, um, of how the mind is working and the, how the subconscious mind is affecting my conscious mind, right? So that's what I got for you. I'm kind of rambling on here for almost 20 minutes. And for the folks who've been messaging me, I don't know. I got some DMs and stuff like that. Uh, if you got some value out of it, let me know. Um, but I will start doing some more uh, book reviews of stuff that I've read. I, I, I know I've kept track of books I've read and I have close to about a thousand books I've read. Um, and I'm literally, as I'm building out my library again here, I have some books right now. I'm waiting on a shipment of about 400 books that are supposed to come in this week we'll see if it comes in this week and when that happens I'll be able to at least like fill up rest of the bookcases I have here at the home office so um, that's what I got for y'all uh, this is Jeff Koga um, let me know um, have you 
had something going on with their life professionally, uh, maybe relationship, f health, fitness, whatever it is where, hey, you know what? This bias kicked in, right? Just like as I started over, right? In the beginning, I said, hey, never ask a, never ask a barber um, if you need a haircut. You know, what did that professional bias kick in where you learned you were listening to an advice was from someone who had a financial interest and or other motives on being able to give you that advice? Right? So that's what I got. Let me know in the question box. This is Jeff Koga signing out. Love you all. Take care. Bye-bye.